before we do anything, let me tell you this. It is out of the law and experience of the ancients and of all those who have studied the powers of the undead. When they become such, there comes with the change the curse of immortality. They cannot die, but must go on age after age adding new victims and multiplying the evils of the world. For all that die from the praying of the undead become themselves undead, and prey on their kind. And so the circle goes on ever widening, like as the ripples from a stone thrown in the water. Immortality is usually explored in fiction to explain the theory of death and existence as a whole. There are usually five types of immortality. Prolonged lifespan or eternal youth, undeath immortality, reincarnation immortality, post-mortality, and absolute immortality. Immortality to humans are where the human is usually exempt from death. Eternal everlasting life where we can cheat death in a magical way. TV shows and films like Highlander, Doctor Who, Pirates of the Caribbean have characters that do not and cannot die. As in terms of supernatural or mythological creatures, from angels to elves, and especially vampires who can live for a gazillion of years, Immortality is always a given for these supernatural creatures. The creatures cannot be harmed in any way and they can live forever. But what about werewolves? Well, they're usually clumped together with vampires and zombies because of the similarities. But in many situations, the werewolf is very different than the vampire or zombie. What makes them different is that they are alive. So since they are alive, it makes them more closer to humans than a creature of the night, right? When researching the immortality of the werewolf in this specific topic, I had to do a deep dive, and this deep dive into the werewolf immortality is very sciencey because it is unclear and only speculation whether the werewolf is actually immortal or not, since they are not dead like the vampire. In this video, I will go into detail about this question and the five different types of immortality to determine and explore not only the immortality of werewolves in my work in progress werewolf novel during the Blue Hour, but I will also conclude my own opinion and theories based on this research that I have collected to try to determine whether or not a werewolf is immortal by delving into the immortality of werewolves in fiction and lore in order to also answer the question, can a werewolf live forever? Number one, absolute immortality. Absolute immortality is where the being cannot be harmed in any way or die at all and is basically indestructible. And then is one of the reasons why it can be explained why immortality is used as a curse in some fiction novels. You like the Elder Scrolls in Skyrim?
And my research from most sources say that in werewolf folklore, a werewolf is not immortal because they can die of their wounds, but they are almost indestructible as they cannot be harmed by any religious artifacts such as holy water in their wolf form, they are more than likely unkillable, healing almost instantaneously. One werewolf I found that was indestructible was no other than the fierce Norse wolf god Fenra, prophesied to be the ultimate downfall of the gods during Ragnarok. Fenra, the son of the god Loki, was said to be so strong that the gods feared him, and no matter what they tried to do to bind him, nothing seemed to work at first. He broke his chains each time, and each time he broke his chains, he grew larger and larger. The last time they tried to trick him, but Fenra was leery and not easily tricked, so he told the gods that in case something happened, to have someone put their hand in his mouth and keep it there until they were finished. So Ty, one of the gods, volunteered, and the other gods proceeded to bound him with the light ribbon chain called Lefanir that was created by the dwarfs. As they tied the ribbon around him, it got tighter and tighter, and soon he wasn't able to move, so he bit off Ty's hand. He is said to still be trapped on the island of Languivi to the stone until Ragnarok, and then he will break free and destroy Odin. I will talk more about Fenra in another video by itself completely. This shows that no matter what the gods did, they could not kill him. Fenra was therefore indestructible, and moreover, having absolute immortality. Number two, prolonged lifespan or eternal youth. Prolonged lifespan or eternal youth is where a being lives and stays young, but they can be killed if mortally wounded, most common in fiction and explored through objects such as the fountain of youth or a magic elixir. In this type of immortality, the immortal being cannot die of natural causes, but they are vulnerable to injury. When talking about the werewolf and its immortality, we have to talk about their lifespan or the possibility of eternal youth. In most situations, we usually don't hear about werewolves growing old, in movies and shows, we see them young, and then, again, it is not really explored. The werewolf is just there in existence, but in most cases, it is said that they do age, in fact, the same way as a human, but there is one caveat. Their aging is much more slower than the average human's. Physical signs of aging are stretched, out over a longer period, in instances such like Stephanie Mayer's werewolves from Twilight, they age. However, the aging process is slowed down based on how much they shift and therefore do not age, but only if they keep the shifting process up altogether while we're controlling the aging process. Which is pretty cool concept that Mayer did and kept close to how wolves can age. She also took from other instances, when a werewolf is in its wolf form, it won't age. Shape-shifting into the wolf form frequently will maintain their current age for a very long period. Moreover, a werewolf who is in fact very old can look like he is in his 20s, much like a vampire, but since he is alive, he is not. So why is this? Let's explore some more. Sometimes when considering the werewolf's immortality, lifespan and internal youth goes hand in hand. So I will pose the question for us to explore later on. Why you think about the answer to this question, we want to first explore how a werewolf ages versus can a werewolf die of old age. 
let's look at this and compare human lifespan with the werewolf lifespan since we know that the werewolf is an alive supernatural creature we can speculate that on some occasions humans have lived past the average age of 80 with Guinness World Record stating the longest living human recorded was 122 years of age. With that being acknowledged, the idea and concept of eternal youth is connected to a term called telomeros, where the DNA of an individual plays an important role in the aging process. In theory based on real world research about the biology of aging within humans, Mortality, it can be suspected that a werewolf's rate of mortality from its biological aging is stable or decreasing, thus decoupling it from chronological age. A biologically mortal living being can still die from means other than the biological age, such as through injury, poison, disease, predation, lack of available resources or changes to the environment. For the werewolf theory of aging in real world research, according to the Animal Aging and Long Longevity Database, the list of animals with negligible aging, along with estimated longevity in the wild, includes these. Other animals and organisms such as the hydras, a genus of the Chindara philium, can regenerate, allowing them to recover from injury. All hydra cells continually divide. It has been suggested that hydras do not undergo biological aging and as such are biologically immortal. With animals such as jellyfish, their DNA replicates and repairs with their key Molecular mechanisms rejuvenating. Frogs and salamanders can regenerate whole body parts if they've been damaged. And among invertebrates, animals without spines, flatworms, and planetarian regeneration is far more impressive than synthesizing a new salamander limb. Flatworm can regenerate their heads or tails if they've been bisected from either end. In real life research with a regular human, the human body is capable of impressive acts of self-repair. Cellular regeneration. But such processes take a lot of time and can take a toll on the body. In order for an injury to be healed by regeneration, the cell type that was destroyed must be able to replicate, although many genes play a role in healing. The tissue naturally regenerates over time by default. New available cells replace expanded cells. For example, the body regenerates a full bone within 10 years, while non-injured skin tissue is regenerated within two weeks. With injured tissue, the body usually has a different response. The emergency response usually involves building a degree of scar tissue over a time period longer than a regenerative response, as has been proven clinically and via observation. With the werewolf, they have a miraculous healing factor. With some cases, a cut that for a human would take a couple of days to heal. For a werewolf, it would take a couple of hours or even seconds to heal. And the ligaments loss could possibly regenerate within a couple of days because of their higher metabolism, which therefore produces more cells than repairing themselves. However, in normal cases of a werewolf's healing, if they lose a limb, it is gone for good. So some have said that if the werewolf maintains a meat diet, they can repair and heal faster. It's important to take note that during the process of aging, an organism accumulates damage to its macromolecular cells, tissues, and organs. 
So for human aging characterized by the declining ability to respond to stress, increased homostasic imbalances and increased risk of aging associated diseases, including cancer and heart disease. Aging also has been defined as a progressive deterioration of physiological function. But the werewolf does and cannot get sick. But you can argue that they have the same increased homeostasic balance as a regular human and wolf. Unless a werewolf is hiding, they are always in flight or in danger, so they can possibly affect their aging. Over time, almost all living organisms experience a gradual, irreversible increase in senescence and an associate loss of proper function of the bodily systems. As aging is the primary risk factor for major human diseases, including cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, and neurodegenerative diseases. However, in relation to the werewolf, none of this at all happens. The werewolf simply has what we call life extension. Wikipedia says life extension is the concept of extending the human lifespan either modestly uh, through improvements in medicine or dramatically by increasing the maximum lifespan beyond generally settled limit of 125 years. However, since the werewolf is not full human and a su supernatural feature who does not need medicine, the life extension given to the werewolf is therefore magically entailed. Werewolves have the ability to partake in the eternal life gift, either in their humanoid or wolf form. Their cells are believed to contain a supernatural power in their DNA, which is responsible for their immortality, but only if they shift regularly into the wolf form. If they choose to stop phasing and shifting, it can harm a werewolf's ability to regenerate, thus facilitating the aging process that is normal within a human. And like I said earlier, the average human lived to be 122 years of age. Moreover, it is said maximum lifespan is determined by the rate of aging for a species inherited in its genes and by environment factors. So with the consideration of the werewolf, the genes of a werewolf in certain fiction allows them to live at a specific maximum greater to at least somewhere over 50 to 80 years. And some say this number of years is double, tripled, or even 10 times the lifespan of the average human by the real wolf years of about 16 years. The life expectancy of the werewolf based on this theory is relative in games like Sims 3 and 4 and in the game Sky Scrum, but many players of the Sky Scrum game based on my research are much skeptical of the life ex expectancy of the werewolf and choose to believe since they can die of wounds and of old age. They are not immortal. But one can argue, just like a vampire, the werewolf can not technically be killed or die. They have to be destroyed. Thus, the immortality of werewolf based on life expectancy can be just as subjective as immortality of a vampire. An example is from Twilight, where although the werewolves can age, they can not die and only can be destroyed, thus making them immortal. Another example, for instance, is Underworld's werewolf lore that consisted of the immortality of the werewolves. And it has it that werewolves are in fact immortal creatures throughout the franchise. I'm going to go in more detail about this in a deep dive video on the Underworld franchise werewolves at a later time. But supposedly the immortality in the Underworld werewolves has a convincing take where immortality is granted by the active Corvinus strain, which is a genetic mutation carried within the genes of the character Alexander Corvinus. Apparently there is a there was an unknown plague where the character Alexander survives, causing the body cell division to mutate past the genetic max. Alexander was the only survivor of this this plague. His body contained a genetic mutation that altered the virus apparently from the plague, thereby halting the cellular deterioration altogether, making him the first true immortal and thus the original carrier of what the franchise named the Corvinus strain. 
Thus, Alexander had three children, one immortal where his immortality lay dormant, and two other boys, twins, Marcus and William Corvinus, both born pure immortals due to the virus strain which resulted from the plague. However, their immortality lay dormant also until William was bitten by a rabid wolf, causing the Corvinus strain he had been born with to mutate, making him the first werewolf. He is the most savage werewolf seen in the franchise to date, with an insatiable appetite for rampage. However, like those he infected, he is unable to revert to his human form. William Corvinus is the original werewolf, survived for 800 years fully intact with seemingly no food, water, or any type of hibernation state and lived a total of about 1600 years. We can deduce maybe also the fact of his immortality living is for so long is also stemmed from being in that hibernation state. But overall, he was in fact immortal and could live forever, only dying when he was destroyed by his descendants, Michael Corvinus. Number three, undeath immortality. In many cases or scenarios, undead immortality is non-existent for the werewolf creature in general and overall, and everyone can pretty much agree with that. Agree. However, my research has led me to find a couple of instances where the werewolf creature is thus an undead creature like the vampire and zombie. Before I mention these three instances, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the undeath and mortality as a whole. An undead being is a corpse reanimated by supernatural forces by the application of either the deceased's own life force or that of another being. Most commonly, the term refers to corporal forms of formerly alive humans such as mummies, vampires, and zombies which have been reanimated by supernatural means, technology, or, or diseases. In some cases, for example, in Dungeons and Dragons, the term also includes incorporated forms of the dead, such as ghosts. The undead are able, at the very least, to move around and manipulate their environment. They are interested in the living and attempt to either communicate with them or prey on them and they are not vulnerable to death by natural causes. So now that we know this about the undeath and mortality and how it works, let's go back to the three instances of undead werewolves I saw and found in my research. The first instance of an undead werewolf that I found in my research was about a werewolf revenant. Mythology.net says a long ago it was somewhat common for werewolves to rise from the dead. Apparently werewolf revenants were produced because of charmed wolves or bargains with the devil and they would only harm those that did them wrong while they were alive but preferred to haunt battlefields or other areas ravaged by war. The second instances of an undead werewolf I found was the Barkalok, a harmful undead creature in folklore found within Greece, the Balkan and Slavic regions. Usually in Greece, the Varkalok or Viacolakas is a vampire creature. However, in the Balkan Slavic region, the Varkalok or rather Slovak was a werewolf and it still has that meaning in the modern Slavic languages and similar one in Romanian. There's even a story that was written in the 18th century called Viacolacas by Pitten D. Tormafort. And in the story, he refers to the reverend as a werewolf, which may have also been translated as bug beers, a word that has nothing to do with bugs nor beers, but it's related to the word boogie, which means spook, spirit, hobgoblin. However, the same word in the form 
Bokolok has come to be used in the sense of vampire. In the folklore of Western Siberia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina and Montenegro. Apparently, the two concepts have become mixed. Even in Bulgaria, original folklore generally describes the Varkolak as a subspecies of the vampire without any wolf like features. Why is the meaning of the word Varkolak different in some regions and changed to mean vampire? I wonder. I will talk more and go in depth and explore about the Varkolak as it relates to werewolves in its own video at a later time. But did you know that in the game Dungeons and Dragons Unleashed, the Varkolak are a dark moon lichen through character who dies of a vampire bite? They come back as a Vikolokas, a being of darkness and hate who has to deal with the bloodlust of a vampire and the darkness of a lycanthrope. I can also go more in depth about the werewolf characters of D&D in a later video as well. So if you would like for me to do a video about the D&D werewolves, leave a comment in the comment section of this video down below. Okay, the third instance of an undead werewolf that I found through, the, through my research was in the game The Elder Scrolls. In the Elder Scrolls game, undead werewolves are lycanthrope undead variant of regular werewolves. One prominent undead werewolf in the game is Bialochu, who is a powerful general who gathers an army of werewolves to attack the region of Camlarn and High Rock in the battles of Gwenumbria Moors. He seems to be unkillable at first, but is soon slain by an unnameable soldier character who used the sword Weirweaver. Weirweaver is a sword forged by Raven Dene. However, apparently, Bolachu's death isn't imminent because the leader of the cult, Angol, the Raven Singer, can resurrect Bolachu, the changeling, and his army of werewolves to wreak havoc across the Cambry Hills. If you would like me to do an in-depth deep dive video essay about Elder Scrolls game werewolves, let me know in the comments below. Number four, reincarnation or resurrection, retroactive immortality. Reincarnation immortality, where a being dies but comes back to life over and over again in different forms. Characters with resurrection, reincarnation immortality can die just like anyone else. The thing is, they will not stay dead. This is not necessarily due to a regenerative capability through, th through this sometimes also applies characters with resurrected immortality can be injured like anyone else and can also suffer, survive, or die from an illness. Venturing into the Teen Wolf universe again on this channel, even though I searched high and low, I couldn't find any indication for an immortal Teen Wolf character, although it is highly debated and speculated among the Teen Wolf community, but in mostly unknown whether they have prolonged longevity and age slowly because the werewolf Satomi, who is one of the oldest werewolves alive in the show and who was found to be at least 100 years old. However, I noticed a couple of instances where a werewolf character characters have been resurrected or reincarnated to their full form after being dead for long periods of time. In the show, one main instance was Peter, who was resurrected not once, but twice but, but three times. The first time being in season two's party guest from a ritual that had to be performed by Lydia, who Peter convinced as a spirit to resurrect him under the full moon and a blood sacrifice from Derek. Although after his resurrection, he found that his strength was incredibly diminished. 
Another werewolf that was brought back, or rather reincarnated, was Sebastian Ballet, a werewolf from the 1700s who was in this show, Iteration of the Beast of Quavadon. He became a werewolf after drinking rainwater from the paw print of a wolf. And in the fifth season, he was resurrected by the Dread Doctors, who created an engineered version of him using a teenage ch chimera werewolf. Number five, post-mortality. Post-mortality is where a being lives on in the afterlife after they die. Wikipedia states that the afterlife, a purported existence in which the essential part of an individual stream, consciousness, or identity continues to exist after the death of their physical body, preferably in different realms. Examples of post-mortality is usually explored in many cultures, famous ones being heaven and Valhalla. The theme of immortality and afterlife as a realm is apparently also prevalent in some spheres of werewolf lore. While researching, there are a couple of instances that I found. One instance is in Skyscrum, where the werewolves go to the hunting grounds when they die, also known as the Great Hunt a realm of oblivion created and ruled over by higher sedatric prince of the hunt. This realm is inhabited by were creatures. These creatures are generally much larger than the counterparts in the mortal realm. All who die with the hunting grounds are doomed to remain within the realm after death. The souls of lycanthropes are claimed by Hyrcene and spend eternity experiencing the thrill of the hunt in his hunting grounds. However, it is possible for a soul to transfer to the proper afterlife, such as if their lycanthrope is cured posthumously, provided their souls is yet to have been taken to the hunting ground. If you want me to do an extensive essay video on this werewolf realm and skyscrum, let me know in the comments below. This game is not the only werewolf pop culture where they play with the theme of werewolves in the afterlife. In werewolf lore, there are werewolves called the Hounds of God. When these werewolves died, they would ascend to heaven and work tirelessly to defend the souls of the earth with God's blessing of the werewolf gift. The werewolves would thus bravely descend into hell and do battle with other entities, preventing them from escaping into the world to wreak havoc on the earth. These two examples of the werewolves in the afterlife who could live forever were considered immortal. Now that I have shown you examples of immortality and the werewolf together, I can now fully answer the question, can a werewolf live forever? Based on the information found and what most people agree with over the internet sphere, werewolves and lycanthropes as we originally know of them are not regular mortals. They exist by a kind of magic that we know not the true origin of, whether it be the moon or a curse created by some other supernatural creature. They are powerful creatures. Whether they can be immortal up until the point that they die, they are, they are also unlike vampires. Werewolves are mortals to the point where they can still die of natural causes and get sick and grow old. And many people would agree they do not share the same gift of eternal life as the rest of their supernatural counterparts. However, through different iterations and fictional stories have created werewolves who can be immortal by different means. With new stories and creations every day about werewolves in the minds of authors and creators, the werewolf, like their supernatural counterparts, can now live forever if only we permit it, and they are not limited to their mortality. Besides, because of the freedom we have spanned different mythologies, we were able to have this. There is still much to explore about the immortality of werewolves. This video only scratched the surface, no pun intended. In later videos on my channel, I will delve deeper about more 
individual immortal wolves and explore how other writers utilize their mortality and mortality in different ways. But wait, there is more. Bonus, the curse and immortality of werewolves in my current werewolf work in progress during the blue hour. In my work in progress werewolf novel, my werewolves are not necessarily not immortal. Since spoiler, there are not and never will be bitten humans who turn into werewolves in my novel. My werewolves are hereditary werewolves who can live and have lived for ages due to a curse they enabled as regular wolves. Therefore, being in reverse where they can turn human. As regular wolves before their curse into reverse werewolves, they lived in a realm that allowed them to live forever once born, but they were vulnerable to being injured or killed by the ancient mortals of their realm. There are different types of these cursed werewolves that have lived forever since the beginning of existence as a wolf in their realm, and it is hard to kill them. The main type of cursed werewolves that can live forever are the original wolves. Werewolves and their offspring from the realm from which they came. Practically nothing can kill these werewolves except other werewolves. They can live forever but are also vulnerable to injury in certain plants. They can also only really be destroyed by individual celestial power that is obtained by each werewolf. Even though they can be injured, they heal faster than most. However, only certain types of werewolves have a special healing salve celestial power that is ignited by their saliva. Those werewolves are able to not only heal themselves, but a whole pack and mortal. Fire can also injure them or even kill them, but nothing a mortal can do can really destroy them. My werewolves can look young or old forever. However, it is based on how old they were as a wolf. However, yearling werewolves born under the curse age like any mortal except their aging is slowed down tremendously. This type of immortality matches somewhat with the prolonged lifespan or eternal youth immortality. My cursed original wolves and their descendants and offspring can mate with mortals, thus creating a second type of werewolf. These werewolves cannot live forever. They can grow old and live up to 50 years. The reincarnation of immortality and post mortality plays an important role in my series. Werewolves can reincarnate throughout my series. However, reincarnation immortality is only explored through two werewolves, a werewolf who was an original wolf before the curse. My series villain character, Athene, who can reincarnate due to having high levels of acromine a poisonous alkaloid present in fungus in her system and her descendant, my main character's uncle who can reincarnate due to his celestial power. All cursed wolves, werewolves and their offspring and descendants when they die go along the wolf road to a realm called Grand Vendor, a cold icy wasteland where the wolves or wolf leaders go to live out an eternal limbo. However, not all werewolves go to this realm when they die. This realm for the werewolves will be explored throughout my series. If you like this werewolf fact video and you want to see more werewolf lore and content involving my work in progress during the whole hour, hit that like and subscribe button on this YouTube channel and then head over to my website to join the werewolf pack newsletter. But first, let's start a dialogue. Here is a poll I created and it looks like two out of one person, people, thought werewolves are immortal. But what do you think? Can werewolves be immortal? I want to know, so let me know in the comments below. What other topics about werewolves would you like to see? Next topic, I will explore a werewolf's eye color.
Thank you.